What? Time to use my ninja skills. Shh, what a bad crack. Be quiet. This is a ninja mission. Benjamin, are you here? Oh no. Hi, I'm FDRAR. I stream me and my friends playing video games over on Twitch, as well as occasionally make YouTube videos about things I care way too much about. This is one such an occasion. In November of 2001, something magical happened. I turned 10. And as many of you may recall, this is the age in which the main protagonist in most of the Pokemon games starts their adventure for biology and competition. Some of you may also note that I'm a huge Pokemon fan. From 1998 to the year 2000, I played and replayed Pokemon Red, Pokemon Yellow, and Pokemon Silver. I played them this way, I played them that way. I got an action replay and played them inside out. Needless to say, I was super excited for Pokemon Crystal version. The first Pokemon game wherein you get to play as a girl sprite. When I opened up my gifts, that one magic cartridge was certainly there, and I put it in my Game Boy like a pro. And as I flipped that power switch, uh, I saw a message. A message I hadn't seen before. This game will only work on a Game Boy Color. I was shattered. How could this happen to me? Luckily, there was one person at my birthday party who really ought to have gotten me a gift, but hadn't yet. And this moment made them feel just guilty enough to walk me over to the nearest toy store and buy me a Game Boy Color. I still have it to this day. It's the limited edition Pokemon Game Boy Color, where Pikachu's cheek is the little power light. I lost the back to it like a decade ago, so. Anyway, this video is about Nintendo and the pink tax. The pink tax is a colloquial term used to refer not to any government-issued taxation, or really any taxation at all, but to refer to a gap between the pricing of similar or identical items marketed towards men and women respectively. An easy example of this is razor blades for shaving if you've ever dealt with them. When you go to the market for the razor blades, oftentimes by the same company, we'll say, Shiklet? They'll sometimes charge $8.99 for a three-pack of blue and silver five-bladed razor blades for men, and right next to it will be a three-pack of pink and silver five-bladed razor blades for women, priced at $9.99. In this sense, it's less of a tax and more of a way for companies to squeeze a few extra dollars out of people who may be sensitive about their gender identity. You know, teenage girls who might be embarrassed if they got caught using a boy razor blade. Now, we have to address a very old and likely false claim that video games became boy toys because they were put on the shelves of toys labeled for boys. This claim is mostly unverifiable and there's not really a record of where every NES console was displayed in stores. But it's safe to say video games got their male-centric association more towards the 1990s when gender-targeted games like Mortal Kombat or Doom hit the market. This to me is a much more believable version of the story of how video games became associated with boys over girls. In 2004, for those of us in the US, Marvelous Entertainment released a game called Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life. Believe me when I say this is likely one of the only non-Pokemon, non-Zelda games that has cost me significant portions of my life. I've discussed this game before as the absolute perfect precursor to titles like Farmville and the later Stardew Valley. This game had it all. An engaging but short story that you could honestly ignore if you'd like, a rich atmosphere, plenty to do, unforgettable characters, and just a lived-in charm you only get from truly passionate developers in their prime. If you haven't already, I suggest picking this game up and giving it a try, but only if you have your next month or so clear because it is pretty addicting. The story follows you as the main character inheriting a farm from your father via his grumpy old friend, Takakura. Taki Suvlaki shows you around and teaches you the basics just as you meet your lifelong companion, 
Well, you meet two of them. They even let you pick if you want the floppy-eared puppy or the pointy-eared puppy. Come on, man, this game has everything. Anyways, you get settled in and learn the ropes, such as which crops grow in which season, how to properly till your fields, and how to take care of your animals. After a short while, you'll meet a group of harvest sprites, they're kinda like little elves, who gift you with the blue feather, which allows you to propose to one of the potential suitors around the town of Forget-Me-Not. Each companion comes complete with their own personality, likes, dislikes, and the schedules. Marrying one has the largest impact on how your future son will look. However, the game isn't over once you've had your son. From then on, year after year, your son will take more and more after whoever you have the strongest relationship with in the town, be it the musician, the pyrotechnic twins, or the iron sculptor. The town grows, people die as others are born, and all in all, it's an experience rich in atmosphere and just exploding with character. But this isn't a love letter to a wonderful life. It's a criticism of another game. Harvest Moon, Another Wonderful Life. Have you figured it out yet? It's the exact same game, except you play as a female character and your suitors are replaced by male characters. It was released one year after A Wonderful Life. The reason I bring this up is because both games hit the US retail market at around $50. However, Nintendo had a special program during that time wherein any game which sold fairly well received a player's choice banner on the game case, and it would have its price artificially lowered from whatever it was retailing at to around $20, brand new from places like Target or GameStop. This sounds wonderful, right? What a wonderful life. No. All we would have needed is for one person in Nintendo who played both games to speak up and say, hey, Mr. Miyamoto, I noticed that these two are the exact same game except one is skinned for boys and the other is skinned for girls. Do you think perhaps we should lower the price of the girl one to match the boy one? I think had someone pointed that out, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. But alas, I do. I always wanted to play another wonderful life just to see it, check it out. But even a used copy would regularly run 30 to $40 due to its high retail value. Meanwhile, used copies of the boy version of the game would dip down to 15, 10, sometimes even five dollars. The pink tax sucks, but it's disappearing more and more every day. Thank goodness we live in 2023, where we almost never have to worry about things like that anymore. Nintendo and Marvelous Entertainment have both grown greatly in their gendered and non-gendered products. And honestly, there's probably never been a better time to be a girl gamer than right now. At least if you just play one player games. If you liked the video, be sure to click the button down below that indicates that. And if you'd like to subscribe to see more of this stuff, there's a button for that too. If you'd like to check out my stream, it's on Twitch under the same name, FDRAR. I usually play six or so nights a week, and me and my friends try to have an awesome time. If none of that appeals to you, I'm glad you at least stopped by. Have a wonderful life.